grace and peace, everybody. Welcome to Berean TV. It's a sun book on um, being on the internet and dealing with ministry on the internet and just meeting people in the barbershop and brothers from the penitentiary. We hear a lot of stuff that would be considered pseudoscience or false type of science or pseudo history a false type of history. There's some crazy misconception out here. Brothers tell me, um, well, the Bible is, is holy Bible. You gotta understand where the word come from. Helios Biblios, and Helios mean the sun. The Bible is a sun book, because in ancient Egypt and Kemet, we were children of the sun, May suns, and all. there's a whole bunch of madness out here. This is how come Rich says to study, to show thyself approved unto God. A workman need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Y'all have to um, check out that Sunday seminary, but like I said, for those that don't even register, I'm going to still be dropping videos, just sharing things because the people of God need to know how to defend the scriptures. They need to understand the development of scripture, how scripture just came about. It didn't just fall out of the air and just fall into the lap of the prophets, but scripture says that holy men move was moved by by the spirit of the most high God and we're going to explain what inspiration means but when people start talking about the Bible y'all there's nothing wrong with questioning them where did you get that from did you read that I remember reading certain things in certain books and I'm like wait wait this guy's a scholar and he's heavy on Egypt and Ethiopia and but he got the Bible wrong I almost I often speak about Omar Johnson he's he's the truth when it comes to child psychology and stuff and that's his area but the history of the bible the history of the history of how this thing came down to us that's not really his area even though he i believe they said he have a, a doctorate degree in child psychology that's his lane we have a lot of people that's not staying in their lane if your thing is medicine you can't speak as a theologian on the history unless you have two degrees you can't speak as a theologian on the history of of the holy scripture you can't speak as an authority on that unless that's what you do and there's a lot of people that's on the internet there's a lot of people speaking as authority now i want to go back to the pseudoscience and this and this um pseudo scholarship people talking about helios biblios we have to understand the word Holy Bible. First of all, that's not what the prophets called it. When we start dealing with the first five books of the Bible, we call that the Pentateuch. Pente meaning five, like the Pentagon, like Pentecost. Pente meaning five, and those five books, traditionally we have attributed those books to the prophet Moses. We call him the lawgiver. That's how come among all the prophets, the Hebrew Israelites acknowledge him as the highest prophet or as the law giver. He wrote Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, and um, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. But the last chapter in Deuteronomy, it had to be Joshua or his editors or whoever was writing at the time because they spoke of the funeral and the burial of what happened to Moses. They spoke of it in the last chapter. But historically, we have attributed those five books to him. And then you have what's known as the Old Testament or the Tanakh. This is what they call it, the law, the prophets, and the writings. When brothers start getting, trying to go back, we have to deal with the original languages. The Bible was originally in Hebrew for the most part all of the Tanakh or all of the Old Testament is written in Hebrew except portions of the book of Daniel and portions of Ezra we would see that's in the Aramaic language. They're all a family of languages but most of it was in the Hebrew language. Now when we get to the New Testament that was written in the Greek language because that was the lingua franca that was the most popular language on the planet at the time because of the ruler Alexander the Great all the lands that he took over he said that he made the common language of the people Greek to unify all of his empires y'all know the history he died and his four generals split up what was all of his kingdom so that's why the New Testament is written in Greek or what some people would call the lingua franca the language of the time or the Septuagint 
When you see scholars, if you're reading a scholarly article and it has the capital letter L, X, X, that means the Septuagint or the 70. Those are the Hebrew translators that translated that in Alexandria, Egypt. But I want to get to this word um, helios that they're talking about. That's a Greek word. And when you're doing biblical studies, if you're a serious student of the Bible, if you're just reading and carrying on and you just want to debate and talk foolishness in the barbershop, that's one thing. But if you're a serious student of the Bible and you're trying to develop your soul and understand certain things that God has delivered to us through this word, you're going to have a study Bible. A study Bible is good to have and you're going to have this right here. This is a Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. A lot of people talk Bible stuff, but as a student of the Bible, you need to know what this is. This has every word that's inside the King James Bible. You have a Strong's, you have a Young, and you have different types of concordances. This costs about $19 and it's very good for you to have. Why is that? Because anytime you're trying to get a deeper understanding of any biblical text inside the King James Bible, for God so loved the world. Let me see that word love because in Hebrew and Greek, in the Greek language alone, you have four different meanings of love. So you have to understand to get a deeper meaning, you could use a concordance. It'll tell you how many times the word love is used from Genesis to Revelation. And it will always, it'll also tell you what type of love. You have agape love, you have eros, that's erotic love. Guys, oh, I love that, I love that Nicki Minaj. You love her, you mean eros, you're, you're, you're attracted to to her in that sense. That's a different type of love. Then you have phileo. That's where we get the word Philadelphia from, the city of brotherly love. So it explains the languages for someone that's not a Hebrew and a Greek scholar. You can still have a working knowledge if you have a Strong's Bible. I mean, a Strong's exhaustive concordance, excuse me. Now, when you look in, inside the Strong's, you'll see certain words for holy. Holy Bible is made up of two words. That first word, holy, in the Hebrew is kadesh. That means something separate or something that is hollowed. Hallowed be thy name. That means the Most High God's name is separate. We shouldn't take his name in vain. Holy is the name of the Lord. His name is separate. Let me see another way I can explain it. I didn't, I think, in another video. If I go to dinner at the family's house, if we're hanging out, if we're cooking out in the backyard, that's one thing. My mother would have dishes. She would have plates. She would have certain silverware that is just for Thanksgiving. You can't take that to the backyard in the house and kick your feet up and mess around with that crystal and all of that stuff because that stuff is hallowed. That stuff is sacred. That stuff is dedicated for one thing when all of the family get together for certain meals, for certain things that we do as a family, not to hang out in the backyard with the kids playing volleyball and just cooking out. That silverware is not for that. It's hollow. It's Kadesh. It's separate. So when we say the Bible is hallowed, the Bible is holy, or these are sacred holy books all combined in one that makes up the Bible, and that's a pure thing to us because we believe that's revelation from the Most High God. Now, if you look at the word, if you go to the Greek and the Hebrew concordance, it'll show you inside here where the word comes from in the Greek and where the word comes from in the Hebrew. Now, people attempt to tell you in prison and in, and in the barber shops and on the internet that this is book is, that is Helios. That's an entirely different word. It's actually, when you look in here, it's 2246. That means east. That means sun. That means brilliance. That word was never used to describe the book of the prophets or the law, the writings and the prophets, the Tanakh, the Pentateuch, or the memoirs of the apostles. All of that today is known as the Bible. Helios, that Greek word was never used for that. So when you hear people make statements like that, they don't know what they're talking about and they're, they're counting on you not understanding a concordance. Even if you don't have a concordance and you have access to the internet, blue letter Bible, you can go to places where you can have a concordance built in with different versions of the Bible and built in with lexicons to help you with the language. And I'm sharing with all of this so y'all can be equipped. <clears throat> Excuse me. So when you get around people and you hear people making statements, you have to shut them down. No, where did you get that from, my brother? What are you talking about? How 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 do you how did you derive to how do you come up with that? 
Where, where is it coming from? And, and you'll find out when you start having working tools to deal with the Bible and you start questioning people. Don't tell me nothing about that son unless you can explain the original languages and where it comes from. But another thing I want to remind y'all that the oldest pagan religion outside of the worship of the Most High God from the time of the holy prophets Enoch and various prophets, the, the, the religion that was at war with the true spirituality of the Most High God has always been and still is today sun worship. This is why we say that the church has been paganized because we have pagan symbols of the sun and that's what they worshipped in Egypt. That's what they worshipped in Babylon. They worshipped that the world over looking to the east and the rising of the sun. If you go to the book of Ezekiel in the 8th chapter, Ezekiel said he was sitting in his house with the elders of Israel and the spirit of the Lord took him away, grabbed him by the lock of his hair and took him into the spirit and took him to Jerusalem. And when he got there, he saw the elders. Remember, every time we deal with the false worship in Israel, it's always been the leaders. If we got a false worship in the church, it's the Catholic priest, it's these bishops, that's Freemasons, and they're going to mingle the worship of the sun. They did it with the building. That's how come a lot of cathedrals in Europe and in America, they're facing the east and the rising of the sun because they're ancient sun worshipers. A lot of bishops are Freemasons. They won't speak on it, but they're involved in masonry in the temple. And the same thing in the Masonic Lodge. In the Blue Lodge, the worshipful master sits on a throne. He sits on his chair facing the east, and he is symbolic of the sun and its rising. If, you, if Freemasons dialogue with each other, they say, I'm traveling. Where are you traveling? I'm traveling to the east. I'm traveling towards the rising of the sun. East is their direction. <coughs> Excuse me, the enemy don't want me to get this out. But this is important that I'm sharing this with you. And that word helios, if you look at it in the Greek, it has to do with brilliance. It has to do with the sun. And it has to do with facing the east. That is the worship of the enemy or those that are against us. And it's mingled with the false worship of the fallen ones. I'll speak about the book of Enoch and all of that stuff later on. So the, so the word um, holy means Kadesh. That means something separate. It's different from the word helio, son. But people will count on you not knowing and it will attempt to mix you up with that. The second word is Bible. Now, what does Bible mean? Bible, it comes from a port in Syria, meaning Biblios. In ancient Egypt, the reeds, the little pieces of grass that would come up in the banks of the Nile River, the ancients would take it and lay it down in strips and beat it dry and lay it out in the sun. And they would make the strips of the paper <coughs> pardon me, diagonally and it would dry. And that's where we get the word pap um, papyrus from. Those were the first books. That's where we get the word paper from. And that's how they write. But it left from Egypt and it went to the ports of Syria. And that's how people would make ancient scrolls or ancient books. Later on, they used animal skin that was known as vellum. But the oldest pieces of manuscripts that we have of the Old Testament are written on that papyrus or that papyrus paper that comes from Egypt. So that just means paper or books. So the Bible is holy Bible. That that means holy or sacred books. The Bible is a library of 66 books. That's what the word Biblios means. So don't know, let nobody fool y'all with no sun worship, no May sons, no children of sun, no comedic foolishness. Know your history, no history of holy writ. Scripture says to study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I'm going to urge y'all to get with that Sunday seminary. Those are long, those are longer classes. We have six week classes on the history of the Bible, the development of the Bible. I'm going to explain to you how they look at the Bible in Harvard and how they look at the Bible in a regular Pentecostal church, how the esoterics have used the Bible to make it say anything they want because they don't deal with context. And I'm going to explain the history of interpretation and break down all the books so you can have a working understanding. 
and as the believer, <clears throat> scripture says that we're to humble ourselves. So when you see people in the barbershop or in the beauty parlor or on the job just running their mouth, you let them talk and you take the position of just asking questions. Where did you get that from? How did you come to that position? And, and, and we'll talk about primary sources and the history of how things happened. But a lot of the confusion is because the enemy is prevalent and the Bible says in the last days it's going to be a falling away.